And the other thing here I always recommend to anybody that's going offshore and wants to be autonomous is to put as much solar on the boat as they can, including powerboats. I was on one uh, in Miami a week or so ago, a 90-foot powerboat in which uh, he put uh, an aluminum rig over the top of the saloon and and forward. He had, uh, I think it was six or seven kilowatts of solar up there. And wow. he'd made the air conditioning system super efficient. And he can operate that boat with all the air conditioning loads in South Florida on the solar alone. That's good. Uh, and of course, he can't propel the boat. I mean, he needs a six, seven hundred, got actually two six hundred and fifty horsepower engines in there. But, but he can run all the house systems, even on a powerboat with a lot of air conditioning and other luxuries. He could run the whole lot off of the solar panels. Oh, it's real. It's not a joke. I totally agree, a hundred percent. Seen fifty yeah. footers run everything on power, not running the generators at all, including washing machine, uh, dryer. Everything running on inverters that are recharged from a large solar array, it's real. It's Power boaters are doing it. I'd say it's half our market here in British Columbia, even more. Power boaters that are mounting solar panels everywhere. Catamarans, of course, it's easier. Uh, Biminis, decks, um, walk-on solar panels, all of it. Getting these large solar arrays like you're talking about. And now that the controllers take various voltages... You can recharge a 48-volt bank. You can recharge a 24, a 12. There's not a lot of obstacles stopping you from recharging the battery bank. And obviously, they can be compatible to lithium as well, the modern charge controllers. What are your implications of doing these large arrays on your side? What are the things that kind of concern you and other, like, any gotchas that you think about for large solar arrays? You know, you can, um, in household applications, we serious connect the panels to get the voltage up, and then we can use much smaller conductors. Um, but in household applications, we can make sure there are no shading issues. Uh, on a boat, my own philosophy is to keep the panels, break them up as much as possible and put an individual controller on each panel um, rather than series connect them into a long string with a single controller, uh, mm-hmm. just because it's almost impossible not to have shading and angle and other issues. And then um, if we've got, even if we've got a relatively small panel, we want to use full-size cells in them um, because in the smaller panels in the past to get the voltage up, we've chopped the cells up so that Mm. we get the 32 to 40 cells that we want in a 12-volt panel. Well, well, in doing that, we reduce the efficiency of the whole system. Uh, Now we can take maybe if we can only fit nine full-size cells, we'll put nine of them there. We might get four and a half or five volts out of the panel. We've got, for the first time ever, we've got boost regulators, which will take that low voltage and boost it up with a maximum power point tracking controller to 12 or 24 or 48 volts or whatever we want. So uh, my philosophy is to is to break the panels up into individual panels, put a controller on each one. Uh, don't worry about the voltage coming out of the panel. Put a boost regulator on there, and then we can optimize the output of all of, of every single panel on the boat, regardless of what's going on with the other panels and shading and angles and all that kind of stuff. And you get redundancy as a benefit as well. Um, you know, you have multiple controllers. If one fails, you just lose one panel. That's what I did on my boat. I yes. have seven yeah. panels. Yeah. Seven panel, uh, six panels, six controllers. Exactly. And two of them are, like you said, they're boost uh, as opposed to buck. So the voltage has to be brought up, not down. Uh, but you're right. They do exist. So there's no reason to not have a, a high efficiency panel, even if the output voltage is lower than the voltage of the battery bank. You can You just put a buck like the Jenison, uh, which are great, great controllers. Um, we yeah, I have um, photographs of catamarans with a string of controllers like this with maybe uh, 12 panels up on the deck, each one with its own controller. And then the output from the controllers all get tied together and back to the battery. Yeah. Um, and it's a super efficient way to do it. It adds obviously a bit more cost, but uh, these controllers are not that expensive. Agreed. The other thing too, the amazing thing uh, nowadays is Tulsa, you can start having individual output, aggregated output of your solar array if you're going with a Victron sort of system, um, you can actually see what each individual compro- controller is doing yes. on yeah. your Touch yeah. 50 or Touch 70. And that is mind-blowing, mind-blowing to have. That is 
yeah. literally Star Trek level type of information to be able to know what your <laughs> ray is doing. And mm -hmm. I've seen it where I actually see the shading from the radar, the communications tower at the back. I see shading and I can see a solar panel that shouldn't be. And then I realize, oh, yeah, it's the sun is actually you can see it inside and you can know what your aggregate output is, individual output per solar controller. It's uh, it's it's a dream state, dream state uh, to have that level yeah. of information for troubleshooting. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, so any sort of downsides on your side from solar, like I have owners that wonder about um, reliability. Um, do you have any take between fixed and uh, the flexible or semi-flexible panels on what's your take on that? It's, it's quality again. Um, those uh, semi-flexible panels, uh, some of them I think now have a 10 year warranty. I believe um, some of the Merlin panels have a 10 year warranty on them. Um, most have a, a five year warranty if they're quality yeah. panels. Uh, but it's also important to make sure that the warranty is not prorated so that if it fails after four and a half years, um, you, you get a new panel as opposed to being told that you've only got 10% of the warranty left and you get a 10% rebate. Um, yeah. And if the manufacturer doesn't have the, the confidence to put that kind of a warranty on the panel, then I wouldn't want to put it on my boat. I mean, what's the point? But uh, if, they're, if they're well built and they've got a decent warranty and you don't abuse them, obviously they've got to be installed properly. Um, there's no reason why they shouldn't last for years. And then the other way, of course, to go is to with solid rooftop style panels. But the minute you take one of those and put it on a frame on a boat, uh, it no longer has a warranty. You know, the warranties yeah. are all based on rooftop. Void. But if you've got yeah. a solid structure that you can do that, uh, the cost of the panels will be a lot cheaper than the the marine semi-flexible. Uh, but by the time you include the cost of the structure, you probably haven't saved anything. But that, that is another way to go. I, I have on our boat, because we have a hard top over the cockpit, a hard bimini. Um, I've got that covered in rigid panels. And those panels are... 16 years old now and they're still putting out close to what they did when they were new um, but uh, they're they're in an area where they're not subject to damage they've never been hit by anything um, and they're, they're totally rigid so there's no flexing uh, and um, and they've held up very well but the, the semi-flexible panels that you can stick down on the deck and so on are, are terrific and the outputs yeah. on them are at least as high now as the uh, rigid panels. I mean, they're using the same cells, basically. Yeah, we, we've we had cr tremendous success with these flexible, so especially with the boats that have a lot of canvas uh, that are just sort of, you know, in the sun, just waiting, fading in the sun, uh, and all that canvas is begging yep. to have something on top. And like I said, the power boaters are doing this as well. Uh, and aesthetically, I think it's important to note, aesthetically, a flexible solar panel keeps the curves of the boat the same. Uh, the profile of the boat won't change. Mm -hmm. Everything looks the same. The moment you start introducing uh, straight lines on a boat where everything is curved, uh, you're, it's going to be – some people aren't bothered by it. Some others are. Um, and that's one of the downsides of rigid is that you're going to – it's going to look – your boat's going to become more functional potentially than it did in the past. It's just harder to hide those rigid panels unless, of course, you have a hard top or I've seen catamaran where they're recessed, which is amazing. They've literally built the deck around a size of panel and you recess them. You, you, you're not walking on them, but you, you're not even going to stub your toe. Uh, arches are a great way. Uh, obviously, rigid uh, dodgers or even biminis are great. If you can have one of those, then that's a high candidate for a rigid panel as well. Uh, but the flexibles, you can mount them, you know, um, all on the canvas and we've done the peel and stick uh with the solbians uh literally having the boat on large catamarans having the brow of the boat installed huge solar rays in a place of the boat where people don't really walk on and uh, you're just sort of like you said you can you can almost offset daily power requirements if you've got a large enough solar ray even on a power boat not propulsion but stay at anchor Right. Almost indefinitely. The, and the, that in itself, loads. yeah, that's a win. I mean, that's a huge win. That's like retirement. Yeah. That, that's a, that's like saying, 
my money coming in equals my money coming out and I don't have to worry about income. That's seriously for a boater to be able to stay there at an anchorage for a period of time without having to run that generator or engine on a light load uh, because, you know, you're not running an efficient charging system. That's a huge win for everyday boaters. Huge win. Huge. Mm -hmm. uh, that's amazing. Yeah. If you um, calculate the cost of generating electricity on a boat using a fossil fueled engine or either the propulsion engine or uh, at anchor, as opposed to when you're underway, because then you're going to be using it anyway. Um, but if you if you do that calculation, you discover that you're paying anywhere from three dollars a kilowatt hour to twenty dollars a kilowatt hour. I mean, they're truly shocking numbers. Yeah. So when you look at the cost of solar in that context, it, it ends up being a good investment as long as you're going to use the boat. You know, if the boat sits at the dock fifty two weeks of the year and you never use it, no good. then uh, what's the point? But if you the more you use the boat, the better the investment in the solar looks. And on a, a lot of um, full-time cruising boats, off-the-grid cruising boats, I think the payback on solar is less than a year in terms of the cost versus the cost of generating the same amount of electricity using the, typically the battery charging at anchor, um, using the main engine battery charging at anchor. The, the solar, the payback is probably less than a year. And the redundancy. I mean, I, I can't tell people – Shore power, losing a shore power connection in the storms that we have sometimes or it being kicked off or a, a neighbor taking your shore power cord, tripping your breaker inside the boat, not realizing when they did so, plugging you back in, breakers off, they don't know. If you have a solar array um, and your loads are re relatively light in the summer, I can offset refrigeration in perpetuity for five months with my solar array, even on cloudy conditions. And so now, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to lose your battery bank. Yep. You know, if you lose shore power before and you had your refrigeration on, you have a timer. You know, you got a week, three days, four days, what, depending on the size of your battery bank, and then you're going to be in a world of pain. The solar is, you know, if it's size big enough, it probably can handle like refrigeration on your boat without a sweat. And it can do that in the summer months when the refrigeration is on, when we're not on board. That's another big win of solar. Um, battery banks are lasting longer. They're not discharging as deep as frequently. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's so many great winds with solar. So I say that's another hidden cost benefit where the solar will maintain your batteries in a higher average state of charge. Mm -hmm. So if they're lead acid batteries, that has a disproportionate impact on their life expectancy. So it, there's, a, there's a hidden benefit there, uh, which can be, if you've got a large uh, lead acid battery bank, can be quite substantial. And yeah, as boaters are chasing, yeah, you're right. And the battery banks are getting bigger. I mean, what they used to be 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and what they are today is it's not an incremental change. I mean, it's multiples, you know, uh, at least double what it used to be, if not more. And some people that are chasing these large banks have bank battery banks that were inconceivable in the past. And now with the solar being there, they're not cycling that battery bank as deep as before. They're letting it go deep at night. But in the daytime, they're pretty much almost going to get to 100 with solar and solar alone. Mm -hmm. Yep. So which is huge win, huge win in terms of longevity for your battery bank. And and having a battery bank that's reliable for pretty much most of the battery life, right? Because if it's not working too hard, it's working but not working too hard, then you're going to have a much longer battery life uh, and cycles, which is, again, another not that solar needs more winds, but that's another good win on top of it. It's like the cherry on top of the cherry on top of a, a pretty nice Sunday. So if you're curious, again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.